The following announcement has been paid for by the Wrestling Epicenter. Hey, hey everybody. Hey guys. Hello, ladies. Remember me? <laughs> Let me talk to you, dummies. It's now time. It's beer time. Tick tock. It's showtime. For the longest running wrestling talk show in history. We are huge. Gonna be cool. You're where it's at. You're smart like me. Tune in each and every week. It's better keep listening. Or I'll come out of your computer and, and turn it on for you. Or else I'm gonna kick your sick of tape in. We've been known by a few names. The needs of the many far outweigh the needs of the few. The interactive interview. Interactive interview. Oh, yeah. Interactive interview. The interactive interview. Interactive interview. The interactive interview. Interactive Wrestling Radio. Interactive Wrestling Radio. Interactive Wrestling Radio. Interactive Radio. Interactive Wrestling Radio. Interactive Wrestling Radio. The Blaze. Blaze, 12.50 a.m. The Blaze. The Blaze. Blaze. The Blaze Rock. And a lot of other names. Weekend Warrior of Wrestling. The Pile Driver. The Epa Wrestling Center. Street Count Wrestling. <laughs> the Hours Lab. But it's all one show. The Wrestling Epicenter. Wrestling Epicenter. The Wrestling Epicenter. The Epicenter. Wrestling Epicenter, dude. The Wrestling Epicenter, don't get off. And your host from day one. By ignorance or arrogance. James Walsh. Wake up, sleepyheads. I can care less. It all starts. What a rush. Oh, boomer sooner. Thank you very much. Wrong. <laughs> I got two words for you. Dumb. Down. Breaking necks and cash and checks. Burn. I've heard a lot about you guys. <laughs> Check it out. Get out of my face. <laughs> Woo. You win. But I'm desperately out of time. So what you gonna do when Place of Mania runs wild on you? Now. And welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio. Joining us on the Newsmaker Line right now is the Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion. He is all night long, Rich Swan. Mr. Swan, are you with me? Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. When we last spoke, a lot has changed since then. And of course, in the intro, I mentioned it. You're the world heavyweight champion now. How does it feel to be the world heavyweight champion of a major promotion? You know, just so many guys have come through Impact Wrestling. So many great names, so many legendary names. Uh, if I was to start naming guys, I would, you know, probably just be, I don't know, disrespecting the people that have come before me because there's just so many great people, um, to be the world champion of a company that has done so much and that has made so many stars is just, I can't even put into words. Uh, but to try, um, it's, you know, the crown is heavy on the head. You know what I'm saying? But I'm locking it. Awesome, awesome. Your story, especially from 2019 to now, has been amazing oh. with the injury that you sustained and to be pretty much down and out and now be where you are. Um, how was the experience of, of recovering from the injury? And I guess, can we confirm that you are now 100% and ready to roll? You know, it was excruciating. It was crazy. It was painful. It was something that, you know, I would never wish on my worst enemy. Um, you know, uh, I broke my leg, my fibula, my ankle, um, everything in my ankle, my foot, uh, and then not only that, my back, the lower back was broken uh, as well. And, you know, I was told I would probably never wrestle ever again, not, maybe never wrestle ever again, let alone walk the same way. So that was something that I had to overcome. And that was just another obstacle that I just jumped over. And uh, once the opportunity came to me, uh, and the doctor said that I was cleared and ready to go uh, after all of the physical therapy that I had to do. And uh, at the time, 
quarantine was mm-hmm. the day. Mm-hmm. You know, people could not um, go to the store without, you know, uh, written consent or like it'd be like uh, only one person of the household could go. Certain uh, doctors' offices were closed. Hospitals were uh, paying attention to COVID. Um, so, you know, at that time, the doctor would just give me the physical therapy uh, routines to do, and I do them in my house. So I was doing it on my own uh, and with no uh, physical trainers, anything. And then once it came time that everything opened up, and the doctors, they saw my uh, progression. They said, you know what? Uh, you've been working very hard. It's time for you to, you know, go back and try what you work. And I did. And once that opportunity rose, you now see where I am today. Absolutely. And I'm so happy to see it. When you did return, it was huge, but there was no live crowd. And I, I got a pretty good answer from a couple of different guys. Is it difficult? Is it different to adjust to performing during the pandemic era in front of nobody in the audience? You know, um, it can be hard. I can see the way it's hard to adjust. But at the same time, I just love wrestling and I love going out there doing what, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I was born to do. And when I'm in the training center with my buddies, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're going hard like we've been on TV in front of 20,000 people sometimes. So it's almost the same way. And at the same time, you know that people are going to be seeing this. And you know the uh, hardworking people that spent their dollar on getting Impact Plus or whatever uh, professional wrestling uh streaming site that you watch your wrestling on or if you watch it on TV or on access or anything, you know what I'm saying? You know that these people are are just watching to see what you're going to do and you want to go out there and kill it just as if they were sitting right there. You know, that's how I feel. All right. So I got this far into the interview without talking about what is probably the most talked about angle going on in professional wrestling right now, which involves yourself and the crossover between Impact Wrestling and AEW, namely Kenny Omega. Before we talk about Kenny directly, what do you think about the two big companies working together here? I think it's awesome. I think it's great for professional wrestling. I love what we're all doing. I love what both companies do. And the fact that we're getting a chance to cross over on something that's just only the beginning. Um, I feel like People are definitely paying attention to everything. Rating show. Um, people that I talk to um, haven't been wrestling things in a while. Um, they're now turning back to it and they're looking at wrestling right now. Like, I don't know. Like it's a new coming. And I'm happy to be a part of it. Recently on AEW Dynamite, we saw the Good Brothers appear and reform a familiar faction with the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. What did you think of seeing the Good Brothers impact sign talent on AEW Dynamite? You know, um, I'm not surprised, especially being as Kenny Omega, every time he's come to impact, uh, we've seen on the bus, the Good Brothers have come in and they've made a reunion, if you will, uh, of the elite club or club or whatever you want to call it, OC. Um, and it was just a matter of time before you've seen the Good Brothers come in and uh, just uh, throw up something that's just a little bit too sweet with Kenny. And um, mm-hmm. when I say that I don't like it, I'd be lying. It was awesome to see for the professional wrestling community, but kind of hard to kill. We're going to see what that alliance is going to be. Very good. Don Callis on Impact was talking about how the Good Brothers and Kenny have their history, but you guys, yourself and the Motor City Machine Guns, you do not have that same chemistry. Do you guys think that you will have that chemistry come next Saturday night at Hard to Kill? You know, the thing is, uh, I've been a study, a study man on the Machine Guns. 
I've been a machine gun myself, as you've seen, and I said on Impact uh, just the other night. Um, you know, I was a machine gun of the inner city, but now repping Detroit, now repping the Motor City, we're going to show everybody that our styles, they just mesh so well. We clash so perfectly. The things that we have done, you know, is just unspeakable when it comes to high flying wrestling, when it comes to what we can put together scientifically in between the squared circle. You know what I mean? And now, yeah, myself, Alex Shelley, and Chris Saban, for the first time ever, being able to show the world what our brains can do, I think people are going to be mind blown. Absolutely. And to get under your skin a little bit, they've started calling Kenny Omega the real world champion, basically implying that you're not. And how do you feel about that comment? And, and does that does that get under your craw a little bit? You know, it doesn't get under my skin because I know what I had to do to win the World Heavyweight Championship. And for somebody to say that they're the real world champion, well, guess what? You are the real world champion in AEW. Uh, maybe due to some tactics that you use with Don Callis, my boss, you know what I'm saying? I will not not forget to mention, but, uh, you know, I did it the, the old-fashioned way. The heart determination with with the power of love of this sport of professional wrestling. And, you know, if you look at our wins and compare those two, who's the real world champion? That's what I leave for everybody. It's a question. Absolutely. Well, my question would be, would you be interested if there was ever a time for a unification match of the two titles? You know, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And I'm not afraid to step into the ring with no man. I fear no man. I only fear one thing. And the thing is, that is not one thing that I will ever fear. If he ever wanted to step into the ring and do a unification, we've seen it. We've seen him go in there into Mexico, and he beat Laredo Kid in AAA. Do I think he can come into my house and do what he did over there? I don't know, but on the time will tell. I'm always open to it. One thing Impact Wrestling has done differently than some of the other companies is still make the talent accessible, especially before major pay-per-views. That's no exception coming up this weekend with Celebration. Do you like meeting with the fans and getting to talk to people, especially in this strange, different way of doing it than, than in before when you would just do it in person? You know, I love meeting with the fans on any way uh, possible, whether it's over the phone, whether it's Skype, whether it's uh, what's the new thing, Zoom, Twitter, uh, which I don't have anymore. But at the time, you know, I always love uh, just talking and conversating with my fans because uh, we share that interest. And that's the love of professional wrestling. And, you know, that's the only way a performer sometimes can grow is that they, you know, sometimes conversate with the people that enjoy what we do as well. And we all grow from it. And I just love talking to the people, you know. Awesome. Awesome. You mentioned you're from Baltimore a few times. A little non-wrestling question for you. What do you think? Are your Ravens going all the way? Man, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I was always a Ray Lewis fan. There's no Ray Lewis on the Ravens anymore, you know. But uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens with the Ravens. I hope they go all the way. But, you know, on the real, to turn heel on Baltimore. Sorry, I'm really an Eagles fan. <laughs> oh, man. That's good. <laughs> there you go. All right. So I got to tell you, when you first signed with Impact Wrestling, I was on the first media call you did to promote your arrival, and I got an interview with you as well. And you mentioned your love of the X Division, how you wanted to be the X Division champion. And you said, and someday I'd also love the chance to be world champion. Someday is now. Um, so congratulations to you on that. And with that, I'll leave you with this kind of a cream puff question. Any final thoughts? 
heading into the big events this coming weekend at Hard to Kill. That is, of course, January 16th. You know, my final thoughts are, I hope the biz quiz is ready to do biz because, uh, you know, the machine guns are coming with a whole lot of ammunition and we ready to fire and unload. So all I'm saying is, I want you to know, we're hard to kill. <laughs> hey guys, it's James Walsh here from the Wrestling Epicenter. I'd like to thank you for finding us here on YouTube. If you get the opportunity, please click that subscribe button, as well as the notifications bell. This way, any time that we upload any new content or new-to-you content from our archives dating back to 2002, you'll be notified You can check out what we're up to. Please also check out www.wrestlingepicenter.com for all your wrestling news and information needs, as well as check out our store to keep us running free. The preceding announcement was paid for by the Wrestling Epicenter. And if you like what you heard, I'm glad. If you didn't like what you heard, we'll go. Most people don't hung up on me. <laughs> we had a lovely conversation. <laughs> <laughs> what a show. Oh, mercy, Daddy. On the radio dial. Don't hang up. Bye bye.